In these examples, we are going to look at a method called factoring by grouping. We use factoring by grouping when we have a polynomial with four terms. Um, later on, we will also use it when we have trinomials with three terms. We'll talk about ways to incorporate the factor by grouping in later lessons. But for now, we're going to focus on polynomials with four terms and how we use the factor by grouping. <clears throat> so let's look at our example. We have xy plus 2x plus 3y plus 6. So we can see that we have a polynomial with four terms. The first thing you do is you split the polynomial into two groups of two terms. So I drew a line down the middle. Now, it's very important when I draw my line, notice how I put it before the plus sign that goes with the 3y. So the 3y, it was the third term. Originally, when we had four terms, the 3y was the third one. You want the sign to stay with that term. So notice how I drew the line before the plus sign. Okay, so I'm going to focus on the first two terms, the xy plus the 2x. And when I look at xy plus 2x, I notice they have a GCF of x. Now I'm going to look at the 3y plus 6, and I notice they have a GCF of 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out the GCF from each of the two pairs of terms. So the first one had a GCF of x, so I'm going to factor out x, and it leaves behind y plus 2. Now, the second pair of terms, the 3y plus 6, had a GCF of 3. So I'm going to factor out the 3, and hey, look at that, it also leaves behind a y plus 2. As soon as you see that your two binomials match, you know that you're on the right track to the correct answer. So I always say, do your little happy dance when those two binomials match because you know that you're doing it right. You can be confident that you're almost done and you're doing it correctly. Okay, so now we're ready to write our final answer. So we take the two GCFs, the x plus 3, and that forms one binomial. And then we take the matching binomials, the y plus 2, and that forms our second binomial, and that's our final answer. Let's look at some more examples. Okay, let's look at part A, and we're going to do step A first. So first thing we do is we group the uh, four-term polynomial into two groups of two, two pairs of two terms. So now when I look at xy plus 5x, I'm going to factor out the GCF. So I notice that there is a GCF of x, and that leaves behind y plus 5. And then when I look at the second pair of terms, the 2y plus 10, I notice there's a GCF of 2, and that also leaves behind y plus 5. So now I'm on step C. If there's now a common binomial factor, factor it out. So this is where you get excited because your y plus 5 matches the y plus 5 in the second pair. And then we take our x plus 2, that makes our first binomial and then we bring in the y plus 5. Now, you can also write the y plus 5 first if you want to, and then the x plus 2 second. Either way, both answers are correct. Okay, let's look at problem B. So first, I'm going to split the polynomial into two groups of two, and when I look at the 15x cubed minus 10x squared, I see the GCF is 5x squared. And after I factor out the 5x squared, I'm left with 3x minus 2. Now I'm going to look at 6x minus 4. The GCF is plus 2. And hey, look at that. It also leaves behind 3x minus 2. So this tells me that I do have a common binomial factor. So now I'm going to factor it out. So by factoring it out, I take the two GCFs, and they form my first binomial. So 5x squared plus 2, and then the matching binomial, 3x minus 2, makes my second binomial. Or, of course, you can switch the order if you want. 3x minus 2 times 5x squared plus 2. Let's take a look at part C. I'm going to split the four-term polynomial down the middle. When I look at 3x squared plus 4xy, there's a GCF of x, and that leaves behind 3x plus 4y. Now, in the second pair of two terms, negative 3x minus 4y. Since my lead coefficient is negative, I have to notice that I want to use a GCF of negative 1. Anytime your leading coefficient is negative, you want the GCF to have a negative sign. So if I factor out negative 1, it changes the sign 
of both terms, so it becomes positive 3x plus 4y, and now I have matching binomials. So now I'm ready to factor out the matching binomials. So the x minus 1 make up the first binomial, and then 3x plus 4y makes up the second binomial, and there's my final answer. Or, of course, I could flip it around if I wanted to. And finally, let's look at part D. I'm going to split it down the middle. The first two terms have a GCF of A, so that leaves me with A times 2A plus 5B. Now, the second two terms, the 2A plus 5B, they don't have anything in common. But notice 2a plus 5b matches the binomial from the first part of the problem. So since they don't have anything in common, the only thing I can factor out is a positive 1. So my GCF is just 1, and then 2a plus 5b just stays the same. But now I have matching binomials. So the a plus 1 makes my first binomial for my final answer, and then the 2a plus 5b makes my second binomial. Now, you'll notice I didn't check my work using FOIL like the directions said. I'll leave that up to you. But if you do FOIL on all four of our final answers, you'll wind up with a four-term polynomial that will match the original problem. So you know that you've done your problems correctly.